Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, good morning, and welcome to Strength for the Day. And we are um, launching this episode. It will be on uh, March 8th, and so hope you've had a good week, and I uh, hope that it's been a week just walking with the Lord. We are, of course, for our church, looking into this weekend. Last week, celebrated our church's 13th uh, anniversary, and now uh, really getting into uh, a new, not a new year, but um, uh, into our f- 14th year, com- yeah, starting our 14th year as Moses Lake Baptist Church, and so it's just been a been a great week, and uh, looking forward to this Sunday with our church family starting a brand new series in the book of Hosea that I believe will be a, a big blessing to everyone. And uh, preached through Hosea a number of years ago on Sunday nights, and I'm looking forward to introducing the series and bringing it back. Um, really, just a, a new series through the book of Hosea, and uh, so I, I hope that it'll be an encouragement. So, if you're in Moses Lake, plan to be at church on Sunday, eight thirty and ten thirty. Don't forget, time change is this weekend, and so hopefully you have that marked down. All right. Well, for strength for the day, we are looking into the book of Judges. Yesterday, in our last episode, we uh, were with Othniel and understanding uh, him calling the people to be right with the Lord themselves before they could uh, they could ask God to really help deliver them from the enemy. And we learned yesterday just about the really the principle, the simple truth of getting sin out of our own life before we uh, before we have a bunch of requests to the Lord. And and the reason for that really, and I, I'm not trying to repeat yesterday's lesson, but the reason for that is just understanding that the Bible is very clear. Uh, the Lord says that he, he will hear us, but uh, he says he doesn't have to respond to us when we hold iniquity in my heart. I think of the, the psalmist wrote, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And the idea will not hear me. Of course, God hears everything and sees everything, but he's not going to have a heart to respond to it. And so we want God, I want God to have a heart to respond to me. So I want a, a right walk with him. Today, we're going to come to Judges chapter 3 and verse number 12 down through verse number 30. It's a longer portion of scripture, so we'll read it right now. Uh, but I'm not going to teach a bunch going through it. We'll just highlight a couple of things. And it's a great story. I love this one. And so Judges chapter 3, beginning in verse number 12, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Remember the people of God choosing to sin against God by resisting to defeat the enemies. And so God said, okay, I'm going to allow those enemies to be an enemy in the land and to be a thorn in your side. Well, the children of Israel sin against God this time. And God says, okay, I'm going to use uh, Eglon, the king of the Moabites, to come in and to enslave you. Then he gathered himself, verse 13, he gathered himself, gathered to himself the people of Ammon and Amalek and went and defeated Israel and took possession of the city of Palms. So the children of Israel served Eglon, king of Moab, 18 years. Remember, uh, Cushan Rishathaim, they served for eight years. Here's Eglon, they're serving him for 18 years. But when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer unto them, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, a left-handed man. I love uh, verse number 15 because I love the fact that God doesn't uh, he doesn't forsake his, his kids. He doesn't forsake us. Those who belong to him, the people cry out to him. And it says that the Lord raised up a deliverer. God answered them. You know, the Lord will always answer prayer. It, that answer might be yes, that answer might be no, and that answer might be wait. But God is always going to work on behalf of his children. And I'm thankful for that. Verse number 16. Now Ehud made himself a dagger. It was double-edged and a cubit in length, and he fastened it under his clothes on his right thigh. So he brought the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. And when he had finished presenting the tribute or the offering from the people, he sent away the people who carried the tribute, but he himself turned back uh, from the stone images that were at Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And the king said, Keep silence, wait. And all who attended him went out from him. 
So Ehud came to him. Now he was sitting upstairs uh, in his private chamber. And then Ehud said, I have a message from God for you. So he arose from his seat. Then Ehud reached from his left hand, took the dagger from his right thigh, and thrust it into Eglon's belly. Even unto the hilt went in after the blade, and the fat closed up over the blade, for he did not draw the dagger out of his belly, and his entrails came out. Then Ehud, I love this story, then Ehud went through the porch and shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. And when he had gone out, Eglon's servants came to look, and to their surprise, the doors of the upper room were locked. So they said, he's probably attending to his needs. So he's probably using the restroom or something. And they waited until they were embarrassed. And still he had not opened the doors of the upper room. Therefore, they took the key and opened them. And there, and there was their master fallen dead on the floor. But Ehud had escaped while they delayed and passed beyond the stone images and escaped to Sarai. And it happened when he arrived that he blew the trumpet in the mountains of Ephraim and the children of Israel went down with him from the mountains and he led them. Then he said to them, follow me for the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites into your hands. So they went down after him, seized the fords of the Jordan leading to Moab and did not allow anyone to cross over. And at that time they killed about 10,000 men of Moab, all men of valor and not a man escaped. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the, Lord, and the land had rest for 80 years. When you look at uh, this chapter and you look at everything that took place, of course, Ehud and Eglon, sorry, I had notes here that went away. Uh, Ehud and Eglon, Eglon is the one that is capturing the people. Ehud is the one that God uses to deliver the people from Eglon, the king of the Moabites. And I, I want us to see, there's so much we could get into. We're not going to dive into all the details. Here's what I want us to see today. I just want us to see how God used a willing servant with a dagger. That's what I want us to think about, how God used a willing servant with a dagger. In Scripture, many times um, the Word of God is compared to a sword. You can see that in um, Hebrews. You can see that in the book of Ephesians, that the Word of God is compared to a sword, the sword of the Spirit. You can talk about um, the power of His Word. You can look at Hebrews where it says that His Word is like a two-edged sword that pierces. Um, when I think about the dagger of Ehud, I think about a sword. I think about, a, I think about Scripture. And what did God do in this passage? Now, again, this is not, this actually happened. This isn't some um, uh, illustration, so we might walk away with a, a point that has been slightly alluded to. That's not, the, that's not the thought here. This story actually took place, but there are some things that we could gather from this. So, Ehud was a willing servant. He just, man, he's been suffering. They've been under this, they've been under Eglon for 18 years. They have been uh, under this oppression and slavery. And uh, Ehud just simply says, you know what, God, I'm willing to be used. I'm willing to be used. And here's what I have. I have my dagger. I have this dagger and this dagger represents uh, to me right now, looking at this story, it represents the word of God. And here's, here's the principle I just want to get out. You know what God's looking for today is God's looking for a willing Christian with the Word of God to just simply stand up for the Lord, to speak up for God, a willing Christian to be used to attack the enemy with the Word of God. You know, the devil fears when a Christian really embraces Scripture and allows Scripture to be active in their life. And boy, when I use scripture in my life, it helps me to overcome sin. It helps me overcome discouragement. The word of God helps me overcome the frustrations and the bitternesses that so often attack my heart. The word of God helps me overcome um, the, uh, the hurts and the frustrations and the anxieties that I face. Uh, I'm thinking about this, even working up to our church's 13th anniversary last week and uh, the last couple of weeks, man, my, my heart was anxious a little bit. Of course, many of you that go to our church with our building fund and all of that stuff, 
And you know what the Lord did? The Lord used the Word of God. I was just listening to some music that was Scripture, and I was listening to a challenge on uh, on leadership from Scripture. And you know what God did? God reminded me, just in my own heart, through the Word of God, God helped me remember, Dennis, I'm in control of this, and I am working behind the scenes, and you don't even know what I'm doing, so just keep following me. So you know what? I want to be a Christian that allows His Word the sword of the Spirit, to pierce my heart. And then I want to be able to use that scripture whenever discouragement comes and frustrations and hurts and bitternesses and sin. I want to be able to use the Word of God to combat that in my life. Matthew 4.4, Jesus said that man won't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds or comes out of the mouth of God. I wonder today, is God's Word, um, is it an intricate part of your life? Do you make God's Word something that you lean into, something that you memorize, something that you look forward to getting into? May we make the decision today. Ehud was a willing servant with a dagger. Uh, Man, God, I want to be a willing servant with the Word of God being used in my life. And uh, tomorrow, as we, uh, or not tomorrow, excuse me, on Monday, as we jump back in, our next episode, whenever you get to it, all right, uh, we're actually going to look at one more character and uh, the principle of being willing to give God what you have in your hand. So it'd be a great lesson looking at Shamgar in Judges chapter 3 and verse number 31. Today, I want to challenge you. Allow God to use His Word through your life to impact the lives of people around you and to help you fight off sin and temptation that would come at you. Have a great day as you use God's word in your life and let God's word speak to you. It really is a true living book that God desires to use every day. We'll see you tomorrow.